ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده واشهد ان محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وبعد my beloved brothers and sisters we are in the last friday or the last day of the year 2021 we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us all that we have done during this year, to forgive us our sins, to look kindly upon us and allow us to be able to benefit from this year that will help us in the new year. We want to remember those who have passed away during this year from COVID and other sicknesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom have takes some of us and he keeps some of us back longer than others. And so Allah has taken many people during this year um, with COVID. I've lost many friends, myself and families. And we also want to express gratitude to Allah for allowing us to be able to be here today on the last day of the year and still going strong, hopefully, that Allah will allow us to see another year. Usually when we come to the end of a year, a lot of people, they do introspection and they think about what happened in the year uh, and what took place. And then we also become hopeful about what we want to do for the new year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hopefully gives us the next year that we become hopeful. And I want to talk about that in terms of what we need to do for the new year. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say to you that the Prophet Sallallahu when he came to the people, there was two primary goals that he had. Number one, fix the individuals, reform the individuals. And number two, create and initiate a society that will allow it to be able to use as a vehicle to change the world. And the Prophet Sallallahu had a 23 year mission and he took 20, 13 years of that to focus on building the individuals. And then he, the other 10 was focused on creating the community that was going to be the vanguard and the example for the world. And to be able to be, use that vehicle to spread Islam. Notice it took 13 years and then 10 years. It is, takes longer to fix the individuals than it does to fix the society. Because once you have prepared the individuals, it's very easy for them to change the society. Now all of us sitting here, the fact that you are here today means you have a level of Iman and a level of commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you represent perhaps 5% of the Muslims, even less than that, who are not here today and who have probably didn't enter a masjid for the whole of last year. And so your coming today is an indication that you are conscious and that you have Iman. And I want to say to you, there are five things that a believer normally consider himself very good at, very strong. And the shaitan takes time to work on those five things because he knows that the believer is so confident that they have these five things well covered in their lifestyle, that there will be no problems in them establishing it. That we become complacent, we lose our vigilance, and it is in that that the shaitan works to destroy us true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in a small way, tries to let us understand the importance of this matter and that we should never let our guard down regarding these five things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, O ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, aminu billahi wa rasulihi wal kitab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the believers and He says, O you who believe, believe in Allah 
and his messenger and the book. It seems a very strange instruction from Allah. You're talking to people who already believe and then you're asking them to believe again. All you who believe, believe in Allah and his messenger and the book. For Allah is trying to let us know to be vigilant, to be careful. Yes, you are believers, but there is a way in which you could lose that Iman if you are not careful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers to keep believing. And these five things are number one, <coughs> that the shaitan will work throughout this year and continues to work on us about. The first one is our niyyah. That the believer, we pride ourselves in the fact that we know in the malamalu bin niyyah. That our actions will be assessed by Allah based on our intention. And so for the believers, we try very hard to whatever we do, to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To make it pure for Him. And we have to always be conscious and careful about that niya. And this is a beautiful thing when you make niya for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. It frees you from the burden of having to do things to please others. Now your life becomes very easy. I don't have to dress or walk or talk or behave to suit Jones or Malik or whoever in the society. I'm doing what I'm doing for Allah. And whether you laugh at me or whether you chide me, as long as I know I'm doing it for Allah in the way that Allah has asked, I become very free. When you do for the sake of Allah, you tend to do those actions also better. Because I'm not doing anything, I'm doing it for Allah. It also makes the action ibadah, if it's done in the way of Allah as well. And so the niyyah is a very critical part of who we are as a person. You know, they had one narration which Ali radiallahu anh, was going to kill someone in the battlefield and they spat on him. And he didn't worry kill him because he said, I wasn't sure what my niyyah would be at that moment. Whether I'm going to kill you out of anger or for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for the believers, niyyah is something that you have to always keep working on. Don't allow yourself to begin to do things just for show or do things for other than pleasing Allah. Don't allow the shaitan to begin to speak to you and tell you, oh, you are so special, you are so important, you matter. You know, you are one of a kind and, and, and put arrogance in our hearts. We have to remain humble and ask and remember to make near. The second thing that shaitan works on is on our ibadah. We all of us are trying our best to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Allah subhanahu wa islam wa ala khams. Part of Islam is five pillars. And among those we have to establish the salah, the zakah, the sawm, the hajj. And so as we try very hard to establish the five daily prayer. If those of you among sitting here have already mastered. That you pray all five daily salah. Then you need to now work on making the quality of this salah better. The khushu' to make when you go to pray, to concentrate and make it of a better quality. If you have not yet reached the level where you are praying five daily salah, then you need to work on that. For that's a very important part of being a Muslim, of being a good Muslim, or worship. And part of that can only happen if you have a clear understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a clear submission to Allah that you understand I have testified that Allah is my Lord I am only concerned in trying to please Him I have told to Allah whatever it is you have asked me I with a willing heart will do the best I can I will try to make my heart submissive to you Allah because when the ayah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَوْشِعِينَ That seek help in salah and sabr. But it will be difficult if the heart doesn't have the humility. It hasn't reached the level of understanding who is Allah and why we need to do this. To seek the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. To earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in our worship, strive very hard 
to make sure you master praying the daily salah. Look at it as a leaking roof in your house. If you have a hole in your roof, you will stop everything to go fix that roof as quickly as possible. You will not delay. And if there are no workers, there are nobody, no roof man in your area, you will become a roofer because you will go on there, you'll put tarp and you will figure out a way to cover that hole. One way or the other, you will find a way because this is a major deal. If your toilet stop working and they're overflowing, you're gonna find a plumber very quickly. Because for you, this is important, it matters. In the same way, you have to feel so concerned about the fact that I'm not establishing the Salah, that I have to make sure I work very hard on it. The third area that the Shaitan will come at us is in our obedience to Allah, in doing the Halal and the Haram, in taking some time to make sure I eat Halal, taking some time to make sure that I don't abuse my brother, that I'm respectful and kind and generous, to avoid the major sins that Allah has defined for us, that we don't lie and cheat. Man minna. We don't. Whoever cheats is not from among us. We all very think of ourselves that I do worship of Allah, I obey Allah, I have good intention, and we're very confident. And the shaitan comes and works on that. The fourth area is, you know, we all know that Allah has allowed us this beautiful privilege of forgiving us our sins. When we turn to Allah, He will forgive us our sins. Oh my servants, you commit sins by day and by night, but I, Allah, forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness of me, and I will forgive you. So we have this gift of seeking forgiveness, but so few people actually ask for forgiveness. Do you every night, for example, before you sleep, ask Allah to forgive you for everything you do for the day? Do you throughout the day keep reminding yourself that I have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness? Sometimes days pass and we don't turn to Allah and ask for forgiveness. So you need to develop a habit of constantly asking Allah to forgive us. Dua also is part of this. We have this beautiful privilege. Allah says, you call on me, I will answer you. فَإِذَا سَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ That when they ask you what Allah says, نَيْرْ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِ إِذَا دَعَانَ And that He will answer you. So few of us make dua. The whole day passes and you, you, you should be making dua, all of us. Constantly throughout the day, everything that bothers you during the day, ask Allah, make a dua to Allah. You go in your car and it gives a strange sound. Oh Allah, help me to discover what this sound is and to be able to fix it. Everything that creates tension in your life, we're supposed to raise our hands and ask Allah. No, you don't have to actually raise your hands. Turn to Allah and ask for solutions. So the shaitan's job is to allow, to make sure that you forget to make dua, you forget to ask for astaghfirullah, to seek forgiveness. And the last one is to every day increase our knowledge of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many of us, we allow days to pass and we learn nothing new about our faith. A religion that Allah began with Ikra, read, that the Muslim is the one who every day increases his knowledge, his connection with the Quran. Because when you're connected with the Quran, you're not only getting new knowledge, but you're getting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming and blessing your whole life. Quran is a mercy and a healing. Rahma wa shifa. And so every believer we pride ourselves, I know a lot about Islam. But we are supposed to be every day learning new things about our deen. 
and growing in that way. So these five things, sometimes we become complacent. We become lax about it. And so in this coming year, be vigilant. Vigilant means being careful to make sure that none of these decay in our character and personality. I know all of us sitting here have all five of these. We seek knowledge. We come to the Juma, we get some knowledge. Ibadah, obedience, niya, forgiveness, and dua. But understand that the shaitan will not allow you to get by without working on us. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be very strong and vigilant during this year to master those five things that we already have in some level so that they may become really strong. And so Allah says, Ya ladina amanu, aminu billah. O you who believe, believe. Keep working on that belief, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Kaseeran Tayyibun Barakun Fee Wa Nashadu An La Ilaha Illallah Wahda Wa Nashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Rabbana Atina Fi Dunya Hasana Wa Fi Al Akhirat Hasana Wa Kina Azab Al Nar Rabbana Innana Sami'na Manadiya Yanadi Lil Imani An Aminu Bi Rabbikum Fa Amanna Nastaghfir Allahu Alladhi La Ilaha Illallah Wa Al Hayy Al Qayyum Wa Natubu Ilayk إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر الرجيم يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وأقيموا الصلاة